Welcome to our preview of Fighting Fantasy Adventures. Choose your own adventure books turned into group dungeon crawls from Martin Wallace. Fighting Fantasy Adventures is a solo or cooperative game designed by Martin Wallace based on the Fighting Fantasy game books by Steve Jackson and Ian Livingston. While our prototype copy contained placeholder art from the final game, we'll be uh, having artwork from Rupert Lewis, Jones, Jeremy Love, and Monstre. Now, the original plan for this game was to kickstart, but that didn't go so well as they had hoped, and they currently have a preview page up right now at GameFound with a lower price point and a few more incentives. Now, this crowdfunding campaign is being run by Wallace Designs. This is Martin Wallace's new publishing company, with the final game not expected to get the backers until 2024. How's that for new hotness from us, folks? Yeah, you don't get that often here. Now, Fighting Fantasy Adventures plays one to four players with a single quest taking one to three hours. Now, the final box will contain four adventures, the Warlock of Firetop Mountain, Island of the Lizard King, Death Trap Dungeon, and the Forest of Doom. And Forest of Doom is actually broken over two parts, names of which should be very familiar to Fighting Fantasy gamebook fans. According to Martin, getting through all of these adventures should take a group between 10 and 15 hours, but that's just with a single playthrough of each. As we learned while playing our prototype version, there's a good chance you're going to want to try some of these more than once, if or maybe when you fail on that first go. Now, we've mentioned it a couple times already, but I want to make this as clear as possible. The copy of the game we got to play, and which we're talking about right here, and which is sitting over my shoulder, is a prototype reviewer copy. It is not a finished product, and we've been very clearly told that the artwork in particular is not at all final. Now, you can see more current artwork on the tabletop simulator version of the game, or on the now-canceled Kickstarter page. Or on the current... Game, game found preview page. Now, another interesting thing they did so we could do this preview without spoiling anything for you, the viewer, is to provide us with a reviewer adventure. Mm -hmm. What we played through isn't actually going to be included in the game box. So that way we could talk about the experience and not ruin any of the included adventures. Which I got to say, that is fantastic. Big props to martin's new company for this like that is just awesome they, they wrote a specific adventure to not spoil anything i would love to see that for more adventure games now fighting fantasy adventures is a card driven dungeon crawl based on the classic game books that many of us grew up playing now similar to the game books you're going to be choosing which way to go finding cards that match the number of where you went and then making decisions based on what you read on the card now, this may lead to combat with various vicious monsters, which is handled by a simple 2d6 opposed role system. Now, your asymmetric characters have various skills they can use, and working together will be key to winning the game. Now, how you win is determined by what scenario you're playing, and one of my favorite lines I've ever seen in a rule book is, you will know when you win this game. Now, normally, we don't do unboxing videos for previews. But since we think this game is going to make quite the splash, and the fact that Mo was already in front of the camera and live when he cracked open the package, we figured why not? So if you want to take a look at the prototype components that we got in our copy, Fighting Fantasy Adventures preview, be sure to check out our unboxing on YouTube. Now, due to this being a prototype, I don't want to say too much about component quality here. Usually I get into details of what I liked and I didn't because most of what we got to play with is going to change. Now, what I will say is I like the direction they're going. Everything seemed to work really well at the table. We found the information very clear and easy to find and well presented. My only real hope at this point is that the counters are a little bigger in the final copy. They're a little little and fiddly. I do love, though, how short and clear the rules were. A lot of this game is left to be discovered once you start playing, once you're actually digging into the decks. And speaking of rules, it's time to move on to an overview of play. So one great thing about Fighting Fantasy Adventures is how quick you can jump right in. Setting up just involves everyone picking a character or characters to play because all four characters need to be in play during every game. So if you're playing solo, you're going to play, play all four of them. If you're two players, you can each take two or whatever you want to mix it up there. Now, each character is represented by a character card and a number of skill cards. You're going to take your character cards and find the level one skill cards and put them face up in front of you. 
Now, each of these skill cards features a one-time use ability, and when you use them during the adventure, you're going to flip them over. Now, these abilities include things like the healer healing and the wizard casting fireball or the fighter using his shield or the scout stabbing people in the back. Our prototype also included level two, three, and four cards, most of which match the skills the character already had, meaning Mm -hmm. that as you level up, you'll get more uses out of your existing abilities as well with potential new abilities specifically for the mage. No, we didn't get to level up our in, in the sample adventure. Yeah, so we can't really talk about those mechanics. Now, once you've all got your characters, you're going to decide your marching order, something that felt very old school role-playing game like to me. Now, there's a combat grid and character tokens to track this, and you just put them down in the order that you're marching in. Now, many of the things we encountered in our game were affected by who was in front. Now, we didn't see it ourselves, but I assume there's probably going to be other instances where it matters who's in the back or who's in the middle as well. Now, finally, grab the two decks for the adventure you're going to play. There's one encounter deck and one dungeon deck. For us, this was simple as we just got the reviewer sample adventure. Flip up the first dungeon tile, find the matching encounter card, and read it. Now, this card gives you what your objective is. Now, for us and our sample adventure was to find a chest and open it, but first we were warned we would have to find three coins before we could get the chest open, which I've got to say is a pretty typical dungeon crawl plot. And in typical dungeon crawl style, you are stuck in a room with a goal and basically nothing else to go on. Good luck. Now here's where the game really starts, as it has you exploring the dungeon through cards. Now each exit lists which card you're going to have to find in place on the table uh, with the color side face up. Now sometimes you get a hint, like it'll say by the door, scratching sounds or digging. Other times you just see a portal door or archway and kind of have to wing it and go through. When you decide as a group which way to go, you're going to draw the appropriate card, dungeon card, take a look at it, because some of the cards you're going to want to look at because they have hints on them to help you deal with whatever you're about to face. You're going to put it down on the, the, the growing map, move your little token that shows where your party is on top of it, find the matching encounter card from the other deck, and read it. What you find will vary wildly. You could find a pile of old rotting furniture, which you can search, or you may enter a room filled with giant bugs. You could find a trap or an unlocked chest just sitting there. Now, in some cases, you just need to do what it says on the card. Maybe you have to take a test, like a skill check to avoid damage from a a trap. You might find something you can search and take the card into your inventory to use later, or get the option to use items you've already collected to get past the current challenge. Some of the items you find let you use them whenever you choose, and there were some things we picked up. We had to decide whether to use them or not, and if we use them, who? should use Mm -hmm. them. Like, do you put on the fancy necklace you just found, or do you drink from the cup of water sitting on the table? Now, the results of these things were wonderfully mixed. Now, since this is a sample reviewer adventure, we're not going to spoil anything. So, for example, that cup of water that happened to be sitting on the table, our scout kind of rushed in and chugged it down with a bit of a negative effect. But had we instead let the cleric take a look at it, they could have blessed the water, giving us holy water we could have probably used later. Of course, being based on the fighting fantasy books, a lot of what you will find are monsters you need to defeat in order to move on. The game has a pretty simple combat system. First, enemies and heroes pair off so that everyone is fighting one opponent. Then, if anyone is left on either side, they can back up another character who's in combat. Now, initiative is based on marching order, but that can be changed after the first round of combat. The important part, though, is that first round, you're stuck in the order you've chosen. Each individual skirmish is is resolved by an opposed 2d6 roll with one of the non-acting characters rolling for the mobs. Both sides add their 2d6 to their skill stat, and then whoever rolled higher does damage equal to the difference between the two totals to the opposing character. Now, heroes can use luck to re-roll both sets of dice, not just yours. you got to re-roll the mobs as well. Something you're going to find you have to do often. In addition to this randomness mitigation, many of the hero skills give bonuses or allow re-rolls or do things like prevent damage completely. Now remember, each skill can only be used once per encounter. After each round of combat, the next character goes. Characters who are backing up other characters get a bonus to their roll based on how much backup there is total. 
when the entire party is ganging up on one baddie, the first helper gets one plus one, the second plus two, and the third plus three. Now, while we didn't see it in our sample adventure, it's also possible for the monsters to hang up in the heroes if they outnumber the number of characters. Now, if a character does run out of hit points, they die. They can no longer talk to the other players or give it advice, and they place their character token on the room they died in. Now, the rule book notes there may be a way to bring the character back from the death dead, but we didn't actually see this option while we played. Now, retreat is also an option after the first combat round, though. You are always obligated to fight at least one round in marching order before you can retreat. After that point, though, you can always just move back to the room you came from, dragging any dead character bodies with you. Any damage on the monsters resets, and they will be full strength when you come back to try again. Now, besides a potential TPK during a fight, your group can also lose in a number of other ways based on the encounter. During our adventure, we saw a bottomless pit, had to sacrifice a hero in order to proceed, and as far as we could tell, that character wasn't going to come back by the end. We could have died due to an imp that was unaffected by normal weapons if we didn't catch it in a net, and eventually ended up all dead at a dead end and starved to death because we found the chest we needed, but only had two of the three coins we needed to open it, and that was past a one-way door. Now, assuming you do better than we did, you should eventually get to an encounter card that tells you that you won which we assume would have happened in our game had we gathered the three coins before heading to the last part of the dungeon that sadly wasn't clearly labeled, hey, if you go past here, you can't come back. So yeah, that's basically it. Start in room number one, choose where to go, find the card, put it on the table, find the matching encounter card, read it and react. Eventually try to accomplish your goal while getting past a variety of obstacles, many of which are going to involve combat. Now, where things get a bit weird is when you lose. While we don't expect cooperative games to be easy, the sometimes sudden and instant ways you can die do bring the game to an abrupt halt, and we weren't really sure what the intention was at that point. So personally, here's where I think you need to look back at the game books this Fighting Fantasy Adventures board game is based, based on. Those were also filled with dead ends and instant death situations. But in those, all players had to do was flip back to the last page they were on and choose another option, which we used to call sticking a thumb in the book because you would leave your thumb on the page you just left so you can go back just in case you messed up. Except this game gives you no place to stick your thumb. Okay, maybe in some cases you could just go back a single room and choose another path, but the way our game ended specifically, there was just no easy way to rewind things. No. It really seemed like the only way was to restart the entire thing and play through it all again, which would be very different as you would know now a lot of the things that were going to happen and what is to be avoided or gone to first. Yes, because these adventures are not randomized every way. Every time we play through this adventure, we're going to start in the same room one. We're going to hear the same sounds around us. And when we go in the other rooms, the encounters are going to be the same. There is, this is not a roguelike. There is no random generation here whatsoever. Now, I think the intent here is that you would retry. I think when you fail, you're expected to go back and play again. With that knowledge, your group learned the first time, like knowing that the chittering sound is not money clanking. Just like you would go back and keep rereading and replaying a game book until you got to the end. Like, I don't think anyone ever sat down and tried to play Warlock of Firetop Mountain. And after their character died the first time, was like, oh, you got to sell the book. I lost. I don't get to find out what happened. You just started over and tried again. And I think that's what Martin Wallace expects you to do with this game. And with that overview done, it's time to move on to some of our thoughts. So the one thing I think you can tell pretty well from the overview of play is this game does a great job of feeling like the classic fighting fantasy game books that it's based on fighting fantasy adventures has a very old school early fantasy rpg feel to it this felt like playing through an old school DD adventure where you really got that feeling of moving room through room through a dungeon the card driven system with minimal dice rolling certainly feels like a much more modern game despite its elderly roots and the simplicity of the gameplay made it incredibly easy to get up and playing yeah. with no delays and struggling with rules or having or difficulty understanding anything. 
Yeah, I've got to admit, this is one of the first games we've reviewed in a long time where I didn't have to grab the rule book once to check anything. And that's impressive. Subtle touches in the game, like listing what you can hear at various doorways and having to pay attention to the actual artwork and the cards added a level of immersion to this game that I wasn't expecting. In addition, acting logically tended to be rewarded and taking silly risks came with a mix of reward and punishment. Like during our game, we found a good mix of, say, cursed jewelry and magic uh, vorpal swords. And while that cup of water, Sean, really probably shouldn't have drank. Now, that being said, while it may have been a preview issue, we did see conflicting sounds depending on what direction you appro approached a room from. And that was a little odd. But again, this is a preview. Yeah, and that one was weird because it was just one. Out of all the rooms, there was one that they didn't seem to quite match up. Now, the combat system here is really simple and worked really well. It played extremely quicky, quickly and always felt tense, but was very random. Thankfully, they give you that luck skill for rerolls because you are going to need it. And figuring out when best to use your hero skills is a big part of the game. There were some really tough fights in our scenario and things got progressively harder the deeper you went in the dungeon, which is fitting for the theme. Indeed, luck is not something to be hoarded for just the right moment. It should be and will be spread freely as mm -hmm. you progress. I found the entire experience to feel rather nostalgic. And I think that's going to be the big draw of this game for longtime fighting fantasy fans. This is a new way to experience that classic which way style of play that many longtime gamers loved. Now, full disclosure, I wasn't a fan of these books growing up. I didn't have them and I have no fond memories of them. <laughs> Similarly, while I played fantasy games for years, I have drifted away from them to other genres most recently. As a result, well, I had fun playing through the dungeon with friends, making mistakes, dealing with bad roles. When the game ended, sort of so did my interest. The idea of doing it all over again because we couldn't go back, even though we knew a lot of the information, just wasn't that interesting to me personally. Fair enough. Whereas I think Deanna and I would have happily sat down and started over right away right then. Now, while I found this new card driven system did a great job of making it feel like classic fighting fantasy adventures, I think the biggest potential problem is that it's a classic fighting fantasy adventure. While having a lot of fantasy RPG tropes and while our personal group is filled with RPG gamers who got into character somewhat, this is not a role playing game. This is very much a dungeon crawling board game with some RPG elements. This is not going to be your next D&D &D alternative. Yeah, at, at the very basic, you know, this game is a card game with dice. Uh, as shown by the fact that you can solo play the game, role play is purely for those at the table, not for the game itself. Yeah, there was definitely, there was an encounter where we could solve it by talking. But there was no actual having to decide what you said, for example. There is none of that here. There is no game master. There is no arbitration. Everything is just very clearly presented and you make your choice. There were some interesting ways they did the mechanic where you made your choice, then flip the card to see what happened. And I thought that was well done, but there was no arbiter here. Overall, this game is, is very clearly made for fans of fighting fantasy game books. And I think it does an awesome job of updating those to a more modern card driven board game format. You really do get the feel of playing one of those classic adventures with all the old school dungeon crawling tropes along with it. If you were fans of those books, you really should check out this new fighting fantasy game out as a fan of the books myself. I really enjoyed this new version. Yeah, this is the real takeaway for listeners. This product drips with history and memories for those who are of a certain age or perhaps even got them from their parents. It is a callback to a different era, but packaged in a modern system. Now, if you're an old school role player looking for a board game that gives you the OSR feel, something you usually don't find in modern dungeon crawlers like oh, Gloomhaven and Too Many Bones are about as far away from the OSR as possible, you might want to give Find of Fantasy Adventures a shot. This could be the perfect thing to play when you're short a player or your GM's on vacation for your regular game night. It's definitely much quicker to get to the table and start playing than most tabletop role-playing games. Yeah, give your GM a night off. There is no prep required for this crawl. 
Now, if you are a fan of those more modern dungeon crawlers, like I just mentioned, or more modern RPGs, this may not be a game for you. It really depends on how much you enjoy randomness in your games and well, how well you and your group take things like instant death based on nearly arbitrary choices or just losing due to a bunch of bad die rolls in a row. This isn't the kind of role-playing game where it's all about experiencing the story and you're expected to reach the end no matter how bad things go along the way. This is a competitive game, even though it's you and your friends versus the adventure. It's a card game designed specifically to please fans of this series of Witchway books, and I think it does that very well, but it belongs soundly on the side of board games, not RPGs. Now, here's an interesting one talking about board games is if you enjoy Tragedy Looper or even more so the time traveling puzzle games in the Time Story series, or if you're a fan of Souls like video games, you may just love this board game. This is due to the fact that an aspect of fighting fantasy adventures is failing and trying a mission again and using what you learned on the last run to help you get further the next time. Well, that's it for our preview of Fighting Fantasy Adventures, a new take on the classic Fighting Fantasy game books by Ian Livingston and Steve Jackson, reimagined by Hall of Fame game designer Martin Wallace. Now, does this game have you hyped as much as it has me hyped? I loved the various game books that came out during my childhood, and I played many of them. And I thought it was awesome to be able to recreate that feel with a group of my friends nowadays. What game books did you grow up playing? Tell us all about it in the comments below. If you did enjoy this preview, please consider tipping your bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop.